All right. Hey, everybody. Wayne here. It's my first time uh, going live here on YouTube. So, figured for a vlog, especially, um, it'd be just as easy to go live, do the vlog, and then we'll call it good because I don't expect this to be longer than 10 minutes or so. Um, so, let's see. My second vlog on the channel. Um, so, state of things, I think the I've been going really well. I think I've done uh, a couple different games now, uh, two playthrough videos, Wars of Marcus Aurelius. I did a playthrough video of House, uh, one of the battles from House of Normandy. Um, to think. Um, I think maybe a couple unboxings. Um, that's pretty standard stuff. But I, like I said, I, I said this before in my first vlog, I want to focus on the um, focus on the playthroughs and really do a lot of those. And so at first my plan was to do playthroughs of the entire game, realizing that might not be possible or uh, desirable for some of these games that are really long, um, for instance, and now we'll jump into kind of the upcoming game section here. Um, the game that I just finished a playthrough of. Um, so it'll be backwards when you guys see it. So just backwards and I see it. I'm gonna have to rewatch my own video. This is my first time doing a live, so whatever. Um, not that there's anybody watching, but I just want to do a live so it'd be easier. I just have to upload a video later. Anyway, um, so it's Konigsberg um, from Revolution Games. I had mentioned this. No, oh, I don't think I had to mention it because um, I kind of came out. I saw some comments on BGG. There was a chip pull, and I really wanted to play it, so I ordered it. And then after House of Normandy. That's right, I mentioned a couple other games I was looking at. Scratch those for now. I went ahead and got Konigsberg. So ran through my first game. It took five hours. So that was at least five hours of game time. Um, that was my first game, so I assume in the future that it would be faster. But still, I don't think anyone wants me to push, wants to watch me push um, little half-inch counters around for five hours. But I definitely still love the idea of play, doing playthrough videos. We do more of them. We keep doing them. Um, I'll just do maybe do more of like a sort of an explanation, like I did with House of Normandy, where I did the explanation, jumped into the game. Um, House of Normandy, I did only even House of Normandy, I didn't even finish. His thing was an hour and a half, and I said, okay, now. So maybe I'll do you know first turn, set up first turn, and then turn in the middle, turn at the end, something like that. Something um, to give everyone a really good idea what the gameplay is like, but isn't necessarily a five hour long video. That's especially me playing solitaire that's a bit much so um so so you can look forward to this week i'm definitely gonna get the konigsberg uh video up um he said just did my game i do have to f i'm gonna do another playthrough as a film but like i said it'll just probably just be a couple turns in there it's still gonna be good i think it's probably gonna be at least a solid hour i'm sure especially since things kind of slow down when i'm doing the video because i explain everything as i go um but Spoiler alert, I really like the game, and I hope you guys will be able to see that um, when you watch me do the little playthrough. So, all right, um, what else we got here? So, Konigsberg, we got that out of the way. All right, um, upcoming game here, upcoming after Konigsberg. So, now this week, I'll definitely have Konigsberg, and then I'd like to maybe this week, we'll see if I get to that, if I get to this. Uh -huh. Raiders of the Deep. So, Raiders of the Deep by Compass Games. Um, this is one that is the designer. It's not Greg Smith. It's I'm on the cover. Huh? It's a shame. Put his name on the cover. Here we go. Designer Ian Cooper. So, series designer Greg Smith. So, Greg Smith did the um, did like the Hunters, Silent Victory. Uh, all those games, by the way, which are getting reprinted fairly soon, soon-ish. You know, I'm sure three, four, five, six months. Um, so Ian Cooper did this game, Raiders of the Deep, which is command U-boats during World War One, And this is something that obviously is built on the Greg Smith system. But I hear a lot of good things. And this is one that uh, Steve Carey on Board Game Geek. That's Board Game Geek, guys, the one I go on to the most. Um, I don't go on to console a whole lot. I read a little bit. I'll, 
mainly what I do is I don't post a lot. I just check stuff there just to see if I'm missing anything, especially a rata update, whatever. But I definitely prefer BGG style. You know, BGG itself looks like it came from the 90s or something. Like all these places need to upgrade. But anyway, um, I go to BGG and Steve Carey always posts on BGG and me and him have talked some, talk about what we like. We seem to have similar interests in a lot of different games. Love this hobby. And so he has, um, he kind of turned me out of this game and I was able to get it at a good price. Brand new from Compass. I've already opened it. So I, and I, I'm sure there's already unboxings. I'll look. I don't think I'm doing an unboxing. It wouldn't even be a new unboxing. I've already opened it and looked through it. Although I haven't punched it yet. So we'll see if I can get to this this week. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's me hard to get to this one this week, especially after. It brings me to my topic that I wanted to talk about here. So reprints, reprints and second editions and third editions. So BGG, again, there's a thread um, on the forums of war games, sub forum there, where someone who has been a war game fan for a long time is not happy with, uh, I think, a lot of second editions. That's, maybe they didn't, I don't want to lump this in. They didn't necessarily say they don't like reprints. They just, they don't like upgrade editions, second editions. I think that make their roles for games. Um, maybe they have features that early games didn't have or upgrades, you know, map, their quality, size, you know, going from paper to mounted, thicker counters, bigger counters, whatever the case may be. It didn't seem like that. And I just have to say that I might well, get where he's coming from. I definitely disagree in a lot of ways because as someone newer to the hobby, and I've only been playing these games for a year and a half, I would be very sad if no games were reprinted or upgraded. And so, okay, so there's kind of two different ideas there. So the first one is reprints, right? I think very few people should be upset with that other than maybe extreme collectors who say, I don't want my game. I consider it worth money being reprinted. Um, I think, is it this one? So you can't... So under, above Warfighter, below the little dice tray, below my Milwaukee Brewers guys, right here. That's uh, 1985, uh, Under Nine Sky. So, and yeah, that's already, they made 200 copies, just came out, sold out, you know, in a day or whatever it was. I don't, these, they're talking about maybe doing another reprint, uh, reprinting it, maybe not. I don't care. I'm not. I don't know if I'm even going to really get the game to the table just because it's huge. So for me, I could end up, I could end up selling it. I could end up reselling it, selling it, whatever. You know, it is what it is, but I'm not going to worry and, and think, I hope they don't want to print it and that game's worth it. So there's the collector aspect, right? And I don't, and also be honest, I don't mind selling games and making, making money on them. Um, I don't sit there and buy and sell to like make profit. I'm not churning games, but Sometimes I'll buy a game, but I'll get a good deal, or I'll buy a bunch like in like, a bundle or to save on shipping, and I'll get a good deal on all of them. And later on, I start selling them. And a lot of these games, they don't the print runs don't last long. I mean, I've, I've already had a few games that I bought, they were in print, and they went out of print. And so then I just sold the extra copies I had, or like extra copy if it was going to realize I didn't really want to play or I wasn't going to get to it. Um, you know, I just I had bought a uh, great. Great campaigns, the American Civil War. I bought several games from the series already, and I'd never been able. I haven't, I haven't played it yet, and I love American Civil War games, but I haven't played it yet. And I reached a point where I was like, okay, here's a game, and I have a couple of the um, Stonewall Jackson's Way Two uh, Clouds Battle of the Clouds. Sorry, um, that I haven't, I haven't even opened. They're still shrink wrap. And I was like, why am I hanging on to these? So you know, sold one. The other one's for sale in the marketplace. Blah blah blah. So, and I have multiple other games for sale too. I have extra stuff. Um, so, selling them, you know, if I can get a couple extra bucks, I don't mind. I, especially because it would be stupid for me to say, hey, this game cost me $60. I'm going to resell it for $60 when everyone else is selling it for $100. i am not, you know, I'll be honest. Some people aren't honest about stuff like that. I'll be honest. I'm not going to then turn on sell for $60 and just, you know, it doesn't make sense because it's 50% chance that person's going to buy it and then resell it. Like, Whoa, I can make money off this. A lot of money. Other than that, though, no, I'm not buying so many games. But so I can see that from maybe of a, 
why a collector gets upset, but at the same time that I do say too bad, you know, I need to buy, I want to buy games that are out of print, re reprint them please so I can play them. I've been doing this a year and a half. There's so many games out of print that I'm not going to buy aftermarket. And some of them I have, but a lot of them I'd love to play unavailable. So for the aftermarket, third part, you know, the aftermarket, um, buying it off board GG market, BGG marketplace, eBay, um, buying it on Reddit, uh, wherever the case may be. So, so there's reprints and then there's second editions, which could be second, third, fourth, whatever, hundredth edition. I think he's upset about there being upgrades and, and also if the publisher maybe and tied to the second, third edition, do they, do they give you an update kit and then should they do it for free or should they make you pay? Here's the deal. Obviously I'm, I'm okay with upgrade kits. Again, maybe it's maybe it's a generational thing of I'm a little bit younger, a little bit of a newer to war games, and I don't I don't mind an an upgrade an upgrade edition. I don't know if I've had any games yet that I've and maybe I'll change my mind if I have, you know, all my games get reprinted with new fancy editions and my old ones are worthless and I feel left out, right? Is it part of what it is? And they won't acknowledge it, but war gamers, just like anyone, can FOMO, fear of missing out, right? And that's what it is. You don't get that second edition. It's got some upgraded cards in it. Okay. What does that mean? Is it you can't play your first edition anymore? No, you can. But you, you don't want to miss out on not having the second edition. It's newer. It's nicer. It's got the upgraded cards, you know, nicer quality. Maybe they fix a couple typos. But maybe they, they could be minor typos that really have no effect on gameplay. But the new edition has them fixed. So you kind of want that. We're upset because maybe the publisher doesn't offer you an upgrade kit. Maybe they don't send you the cards for free. They do sell an upgrade kit. Or maybe there's no upgrade kit at all. They just say, you know, oh, well, you know, it just doesn't really feasible for that. You're going to have to you know, pick up the new edition if you're that interested. Or they'll make the PDF files available and people can print them out. They do that a lot. Um, again, I'm okay with that. Like, give me the new edition. Give me the upgraded one. Give me the new one. Print these games, you know. Give them my, get them out there so I can buy them and I can play them. You know, I hate finding out a game that, oh, I'm interested in that one. It's out of print. Out of print, huh? And most of the time, I go look for the price, double MSRP. Again, I'm not against people making money on them or, you know, selling their new and shrink copy for, you know, they paid 40 back in the day that I'm self rating now. I'm not against that. The market will bear the price. If that's what they'll sell it at and someone will pay that, go for it. But I also don't want to, um, I'm also not going to say, well, that's it though. I never want to see it reprinted. So instead of supposed to buy an $80 one from somebody and who knows the quality really is going to be brand new or not. Oh, please reprint it. You know, GMT, your P500, Compass, pre-order system, um, DVG, Kickstarters. Uh, and there's all these new publishers that I knew. They're not... I mean, they're new in board gaming, new in war gaming. Um, most of them have now, even then, these new ones are around at least as long as I've been doing war gaming here. So they're not necessarily like newer than me, but they're still new in G GMT, basically. So we're talking about um, Holland Spiel, uh, which was I, Wars Marx Relius, published by them, um, and House of Normandy, published by them. Um, Revolution Games. Konigsberg, published by Revolution Games. It originally published uh, somewhere else, but they upgraded it. New edition. Oh, there you go. New edition. New components, upgraded components. Um, I think you read artwork. All kinds of stuff. Released. I love it. Just played it for five hours. We didn't play it again right away here. Do a video on it. I love the game. Old school vibe. Eastern Front. Soviet steamroller, but Germans have a lot of defensive things they can do. I'm going off on about, about comics. Well, I'm already almost 15 minutes here, going a lot longer than I thought I'd go. Um, so I guess my point was that thread got me thinking, and although I, I respect the opinion that you don't want your games to be bad, your, it's not bad you don't want your games to um, be you know, obsolete, uh, you know, whatever the term may be, I understand that. I understand you spend good money on a game, you spend 40, 50, 60 bucks, and maybe you don't even get to play it yet, and the new edition comes out, 
and you feel like, well, I can't resell. Now I'm going to try to, you know, and try to, and I run a uh, fair trade list on BGG, War Game One, where we trade war games. And I keep a minimum value and a certain year, newer games called the fresh list. So I want newer games being traded. And, you know, sometimes people, and then other lists too, they post games that are the first edition version. That's a game that's really sought after, like Empire of the Sun, but they post the first edition of it. Well, there's already a second edition, and the third one is coming relatively soon. We'll see, but it's definitely in the works and getting closer. And they won't have a lot of interest in that first edition. And some people kind of, I don't know if they just act like they don't know why. I don't know what of interest in this. Well, first of all, I'm sure there are some people interested in there's not There's not as many. First of all, it's already one edition older. And secondly, there's also a third, there's another edition coming. So understand, so that first, that person, that first edition wants to trade it away because all they think is I have Empire of the Sun, out of print, Mark Herman, baller status. Let's trade this game away. People are going to be jumping at this game. And then it doesn't go. And no one picks it up. And no one wants it. And 72 hours pass. And it, off the list and they're like what well, just happened it's empire of the sun because there's newer editions coming there's a new edition out and there's another one coming soon they suddenly outdated when they released the second edition with twice the maps twice the u-boats and there's an app you can download but it's only compatible with the second edition so it's not compatible with this one yeah you know considering what i spent on this one yeah I'm, I'll, I'll probably be a little annoyed too but I hope part of me will realize and respect that reprints and new editions, they're they're a good thing. Overall, they're a very good thing for the hobby. They're a good thing for getting new people into it, new, like me, newer to this hobby. You know, I've been playing these games, these war games for 40 years, 30 years, 20, not 10, not five, not three, year and a half. I hope to make it 10 years, 20 years, who knows? But so then I need the games to be printed and reprinted and kept around so I can pick them up and play them. So, all right, well, that was my rant, my vlog rant. Um, and there's anything else, guys. You know what? So far, I just want to say channels, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. If you enjoy what you're seeing, I can do this, but please subscribe. Uh, leave comments if you want to. If you had a few, com few nice comments, uh, a few nice messages, please leave your comments. Constructive criticism, otherwise, um, subscribe. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me new games you want to see. You know, I'm. I have a general plan. I want to try to. For those who've seen from the last vlog when none of the other games came on here, and I skipped to Konigsberg and now Raiders of the Deep. We'll see. But I want to maybe try to do lesser known games and then um, by smaller publishers. So you know, do that. Holland Spiel, Wars of Marker Up, Wars of Marcus Aurelius, and House of Normandy, Shield and Sword 2 system, right? Do those. And okay, now Revolution Games, it's not a small, this is, or it is a smaller one, excuse me. Okay, so still on the smaller Revolution Games with Konigsberg, and I'm going to get that done this week. But then Compass Games, you know, a big box release. Expensive, but is it worth it? We'll find out. Um, and then maybe, you know, another little one, Holland Spiel, White Dog Games, another one by Revolution Games. I don't have a lot of theirs yet. That's something to do. I need to start picking up some more Revolution Games. Games. Revolution Games. Games? Whatever. You get the idea. Um, so I think that's it. Um, so thank you so much, guys, for tuning in, for watching this, if you watch it for it looks like 20 minutes here. Um, I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Let's say it again. Don't unsubscribe. Subscribe. Um, and hopefully you guys look forward to my videos, enjoy them and let me know what you want to see. And I'll try to get it from revolution, Holland spiel, compass, GMT, DVG. We're going to cover all across lots of playthroughs, um, not just reviews, but actual playthroughs, explanations, and try to get you into as many different types of games as possible. Right. But thanks guys. And I will talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye.